Hello everyone, welcome back to YouTube channel of Kendra Engineering College. In today's video session, we will be moving towards the module 5 of Analog and Digital Electronics. So up till now, we have covered module 2, module 3 and module 4 and the videos of all the three modules have been uploaded into the YouTube channel of Kendra Engineering College. So in today's video session, we will be moving on to module 5 of analog and digital electronics which is all about registers and counters. So in fact, this particular module is the continued version of the last module what we have studied. So in the last module, we have looked what are latches, what are flip flops, how do they perform, what are the different kinds of flip flops and the application part of the flip flops. So moving on further that is to module 5 which says it is about registers and counters we need to look into the advanced version of flip flops or we need to look into the upgraded version of flip flops so let's look into what are the basic things or what is the brief blow of the syllabus so in this syllabus we need to be looking into the following topics the topics what we are going to deal with here are register and register transfers so we need to be looking into what are registers and we need to looking into how basically the data will be transferred from one register into other registers. Moving on to the application part of the registers, we need to look into parallel adder with accumulator. After that we need to look into shift registers which is once again an application of registers. Later we need to look into one more application of the flip-flops which is about counters so we need to look into the design part of binary counters so counters how basically the counters are going to be designed later we need to be looking into the design part of the counters which will be counting the various sequences in fact i'll be giving you a very good detailed discussion about all this particular topic this is all about the brief blow up what we are going to go through in this particular module later we need to look into the design of the counters using the same flip-flops what we had studied previously as a final part we will be looking into sequential parity checkers and state tables and the graphs so this is the brief blob of what we are going to look up in this entire module in fact this particular module is not as simple as what we have seen through all these particular videos it may be your module 2 module 3 or module 4 this module is slightly complicated when compared to all the three modules what we have come across so let's start with the discussions first of all we need to get ourselves comfortable with what this particular topic is all about so in order to get comfortable with this particular topic we need to know what are registers and what are counters so you can check here when i speak about a definition of a register you can see here the definition has been very clear cutly i mean given very in a clear cut fashion so here it is given a register a register consists of a group of flip flops with a common clock input so the work what we are going to do further seems to be little bit simple because they say it is group of flip flops this is what i said we are going to look into the advanced part of the topic what we have studied previously so we already know of flip flops so when i speak about registers this registers are nothing but group of of flip flops so what they say is you already know something called flip flops we have already studied a flip flop which can store one bit of data now what we need to do is we need to take a group of flip flops together let me say that i'll be taking four flip flops together so this four flip flops had, has made a group it is not necessary i need to limit myself to four flip flops as an example i'm saying you that 
I have taken four flip flops which makes up a group. So this can store one bit of data, this can store one bit of data, this can store one bit of data, and this can store one bit of data. As already explained to you people in the previous video sessions, when I want to call them as flip flops, you need to connect the clock input. There should be a common clock connected to this particular storage devices in order to make them flip flops. If you had not connected a clock to a storage device, then they do not become a flip flop. You can call them as latches. So I'll be taking a common clock and I'll be connecting them to all this particular flip flops. Let us say I have connected in this fashion. Let us say that it is all connected in this particular fashion. So a common clock is taken and it is connected to a group of flip flops. This group of flip flops which are connected to a common clock, you can combinedly call this particular flip flops or a group, group of flip flops as a register. You can call this combinedly as a register. So what I can understand from this is flip flop is a storage device which can store one bit of data. Register is also a storage device which can store multiple bit of data. So basically registers are nothing but memory or storage devices which can store multiple bit of data. But if you open up this registers, this registers are in turn made up of flip flops which are connected together. They may be connected together with a common clock input. That is what it says. A register consists of a group of flip flops with a common clock input. That is what is registers. Registers are commonly used to store and shift binary data. So normally the usage of the registers are very common. Whenever you have got flip flops and whenever you have got group of flip flops, why do you use it? Use You use them to store the data. So storage of the data is already known to me. I know that I can use my flip flops to store the data or group of flip flops can be used to store multiple data. One more application of this register is you can shift that binary data. Shifting of the data is also possible. Shifting means let it that I had one bit of data here. You had one bit of data here. This data can be shifted from this register to this register and from this register you can shift it here and from this register you can shift it here. The data can either be shifted to the right hand side or you can either shift it to the left hand side. So shifting of the data in the registers is also possible. So registers can be used in order to store the data or in order to shift the data. If you are using the registers to shift the data, you will be calling them as shift registers. What I need to be studying in the future. This is one thing. The second topic what I need to do is, my topic says that registers and counters, right? So I am making yourself comfortable with what is a register. So we know what are registers. Registers are nothing but it's a group of flip flops which are connected together, which is connected to a common clock input. And the usage of the register is to store multiple data and also to shift the data. Shifting the data, I have not yet studied till now. So let's look into that later. Second thing, second topic says, Second topic of my module 5 says that it's a counter. A counter is usually constructed from two or more flip flops, obviously. So, it is also constructed from two or more flip flops, which change states in a prescribed sequence when input pulses are received. So, you would have seen, for example, let us say that counter is this one, okay? Let us say that I have four flip flops connected. So, one, 2, 3 and 4. So when it receives the data, let us say that when the first, let me say that the data in the flip flop is 0, 0, 0. After the first bit of data has been received by this particular counter, which is in turn made up of flip flop, the count in the flip flop will become 0, 0, 0, 1. When the second set of data has been received, it will become 0, 0, 0, 2. So this is what is counter. Counter is a device which will keep count of the sequence that happens. For example, you can take your speedometer. You can take your speedometer of your bike. So when you speak uh, about a speedometer of the bike, initial readings of my speedometer will be something like the 0000. 
after you start using the bike it will become 0, 0, 0, 0001 it will become 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002 after that it will become 0, 0, 0, 0, 0009 after that it will become 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. so this is actually a counter so if you are asking me sir what is it made up of it is made up of flip flops so if you can check here this is your first flip flop second one third one fourth one fifth one and sixth one so you can connect your flip flops either to store the data or you can connect your flip flops also to count the sequence that happens so this is what is the topic all about this is what is the topic all about so you need to be looking in detail with respect to this you need to be checking how does the register work what is the clock input how do you load the data into the registers whether there are any categories in the register whether there are any registers which will be working very fast you need to look into all the things similarly when you speak about a counter you need to check how the flip flops has to be connected how the clock is to be connected how the data is to be connected how the counters will be counting the sequence it happens is it possible to design a counter of my choice so these are all the topics what I need to look in this particular topic. So that is what your topic was saying. The topic was saying registers and counters. So right now I have a general idea regarding what is a register and I have a very little bit idea regarding what is a counter. So let us get in detail with respect to this or let us get in depth with this particular topics. So moving on. Okay register and register transfers so let us not speak about register transfers right now let us not speak about this register transfers right now let us speak about only registers let's check out how a register looks like so here in the diagram what you can see is can i know what is this particular thing let's let's concentrate only on the blocks whatever i'm going to put a tick mark okay i'll put a tick mark here i'll put a tick mark here so can i know what are all this particular things if I look into this particular blocks, this particular blocks are the very familiar blocks what I have looked in my previous video sessions or in the previous module. So these are nothing but your D flip flops. So there is D flip flop, first D flip flop, second D flip flop, third D flip flop and fourth D flip flop. And can you see that this four flip flops are connected in a group? As this four flip flops are connected in a group, I can call them as a register. I can call them as a register. Now if I ask you, how many flip flops are connected? You will directly say, sir, four flip flops are connected. You will say, four flip flops are connected. So, when you connect four flip flops, if I ask you, how many bit of data can it store? One flip flop can store one bit of data. So, four flip flops can store four bit of data. So, you can directly come to a conclusion that the circuit diagram what I am seeing here is a circuit diagram of a register which is of the capacity 4 bit that is what it says 4 bit D flip flop registers so we will look only up till here it is a flip it is a register which is made up of D flip flop which has got a capacity to store 4 bit of data that is why we call it as 4 bit D flip flop registers or we call it as a register which can store 4 bit of data normal things there is nothing else see as i said you my flip flops will be having additional input so you can see clear input you can see the clear input here your flip flop needed a clock so you can see the clock input here you can see the clock inputs here other than that what you can see is you can see the data you can see the data input here you can see the data which are getting fed to the flip i mean flip flops so when you combine this flip flops together they form a registers and those registers should be having terminals through which you can feed the data isn't it so this are the terminals so you can see the terminals here see you can see the terminals here through which you can feed the data but the feeding of the data to the registers will not happen as such because you know that the flip flops the feeding of the data is in synchronous with respect to clock that is why i have connected a clock input so how does this work sir how does this particular register work so initially what i do was let me write it down in steps here you will be giving a clear n input clear n means clear negative so what you need to do is you need to give a low input 
signal via the clear line or via the clear line you need to be giving a low input you need to be giving zero once you give zero you can see a bubbles here there are bubbles that are connected here right can you can see the bubbles so once this clear signal has been activated all the flip flops will be cleared so whatever data was present in the flip flops here will all become zero it will all become zero it will all become zero because you are given the clear input right you are not given the preset input preset input is not shown here so as soon as you give the clear input the data in the flip flop will all be cleared and if you go and check the output at q0 q1 q2 and q3 you can see i'll write it down here okay q3 q2 q1 and q0 this will all be 0 0 0 0 because you have activated the clear input because of the activation of this clear input all the data will become zero after that what you need to do is you need to make your you need to give the load input you need to give the load input load input is an input signal load input is an input signal which should be activated if you want to feed new data to this particular flip flops load is a signal which has to be given to the flip flop if you want to load new data to the flip flop without giving this load put or without activating this load signal data will not go inside so you need to be making this load signal high you need to be making this load signal high after the load signal is made high after the load signal is made high you need to give the data you need to give the data input that is 1 1 0 1 should be kept ready at the input of this particular flip flop so i told you already the data should be ready at the input side of the flip flops before the occurrence of the clock edge so what you do is you give the load signal after the load signal is given you give the data input you keep your data ready after the data has been kept ready you give the clock input after you give the clock input the data what has been given at this particular flip flop will be absorbed by this particular flip flops and at the input side the data 1 1 0 1 which was present in the output side will be present in the or will be loaded into the flip flops after that after some time if you go and check the output after some time if you go and check the output q3 q2 q1 and q0 the output will be 1 1 0 1 this is how you load the data into the registers if it was a single flip flop if it was a single flip flop then i would have called it as a flip flop itself but right now you are connected group of flip flops together with a common clock input with a common load input and with a common clear input which makes it a register so this is a four bit register i just explain to you people how basically can you load your register with a new data so what do you need to do first you need to clear the data so you need to give the clear input after giving the clear input you need to make your load high after giving the load high after load high you need to keep your data ready after the data is kept ready you need to give the clock input for example if you say that sir i will press the clear input i'll press the clear input no issues with respect to this but load i'll make it zero i'll make my load equal to zero if you make your load input zero if you make your load input zero this will become zero into the clock which means this will be disabled so when this is disabled when this is disabled clock input cannot go to the flip flop if the clock input cannot go to the flip flop your flip flops will still be showing the data what was present before what i mean to say is without giving the load input you cannot load new data to the registers you need to give the load input after the load input is given you need to give your data after the data is given you need to give the clock input after the clock input has been given the data what you intended to feed to your registers will be available at the output side it will be available at the output side so load input has to be given without giving load input your registers cannot load the new data but the problem with respect to connecting load and clock together if we are connecting the load and clock together to a and gate and if you are taking that as a single output normally there will be timing issues 
my circuit will normally be facing timing issues. Timing issues in the sense, some of sometimes this load input will not be shown at the registers at, the, at all. Even though you give the load input, the load input will not be shown at all. So, in order to avoid that confusion, what they did is they separated this load and clock input and they fed it separately to the registers. See, this is what it has been explained. Previously, whatever explanations are given were all this. When load is equal to 0, the register is not clocked and it holds present value, which means previous value, whatever it was there, will be held. When load is equal to 0, the clock signal is transmitted to the flip flop clock inputs. And the data applied at the D input will be loaded to the flip flop, which means that if new data has to be loaded, load should signal should be given, clock signal should be given. The flip flops in the registers have asynchronous clear inputs that are connected to clear the signal, that are connected to clear the signal. This also has been explained. But these registers are negative edge triggered, okay? Are negative edge triggered. What I mean by negative edge triggered is this flip flops will be absorbing the data. If this is your clock input, if this is your clock input, this registers will be absorbing the data during the negative edge of the clock because you can see a bubble here. You can see a bubble here. So, that is why these flip flops are negative edge triggered. Because of the negative edge triggered which are connected together, these registers are also negative edge activated registers. As I said you, connecting load and clock together will always have timing issue. Will always have the timing issue. So, what they did is, so what they did here is, they connected this load input separately. They connected this load input separately and that is connected to CE. This CE stands for chip enable. CE stands for chip enable. Chip enable means your circuit should be ready, right, in order to absorb the data. So, in order to absorb the data, if it has to be ready, something should be enabled. Very similar to you would have seen. In, in case of your multiplexers, you had an enable input. In case of your multiplexers, you had an enable input, right? Very similar to that, chip enable is a additional input what you can see in the flip flops, which is actually used to enable the chip. So, first what you will do is, you will give the clear input. All the data will be cleared. Later, you give the load input. After the load input is given, your chips will be ready or your flip flops will be ready to absorb the data. Once the flip flops are ready to absorb the data, data will be fed. Or data will be kept ready here. After the data are kept ready here, you will give the clock input. So, this is your first signal. This is your second signal to be given. This is your third signal to be given. After the third signal is given, you will give the fourth signal. That is your clock input. After the clock input is given, your flip flops will be absorbing the data during the negative edge of the clock. And after a particular time, after a particular time, that is propagation time, after a propagation time, your Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0 will become 1, 1, 0, 1. Before loading the data, before loading the data, your Q3, Q2, Q1 and Q0 were 0, 0, 0, 0. Why was it 0, 0? Because you are given the clear input. So, this is your circuit diagram and this is your symbolic diagram. You need not draw all the four flip flops. You need not draw all the four flip flops. You can draw a single flip flop because my clear input, clock input, and load input is a single, right? It is synchronous. It is synchronous. It is a single input. So, you can show all those inputs here. You can show all those inputs here. And the four data which are entirely different, I can call this as D3, D2, D1, and D0. They are represented by a line, by a thick line, and you put a cross across that and indicate how many inputs are there. Similarly, with respect to output also, you draw a thick line and put a cross across that saying how many outputs are actually coming out of those particular registers. So, this is your circuit diagram and this one is your symbolic diagram. So, this is all regarding the very basics of a register. What is a register? How does it look like? How does it load the data? How does it absorb the data? What are the various signals that are present in the registers? And this is all about that. Thank you.